Hi, Megan. <laughs> Hi, Bailey. Thank you for coming back on to talk to me and sharing all of your wisdom that I could always use more of in my life <laughs> on all topics, uh, but especially this one. You mm. are definitely that uh, friend in my life that I feel comfortable sharing. I don't know if I would call it like the darker pieces of myself, but maybe I would like the stuff that you think about, but you don't really want to admit to most people because it like induces shame or, you know, all sorts of emotions. And so even if you weren't a psychologist, you would still be this person for me, but it's so amazing that you have all of that training on top of it. Um, and so, yeah, I want other people to be able to utilize all of your knowledge. So today we're talking about obviously jealousy, but specifically jealousy that can be triggered when somebody has gone through a pregnancy loss or is struggling to become pregnant. And suddenly it seems like everybody that they know is getting pregnant with healthy babies. They're birthing healthy babies. And this topic came from my own experience you know, first struggling to become pregnant, then becoming pregnant, having a miscarriage, and then taking a decent amount of time after that to get pregnant again. So I, you know, experienced this personally. And then I've had, you know, lots of women that I work with that have, they, and they call it admitting to it. They like whisper it because most of us feel shame around it, I think, because in our culture, I think there is that perception that you should just be happy for somebody else that they have a blessing. Like, obviously they're not doing anything to you. They just got pregnant. It's not a personal insult, but I felt that it was, even though I knew consciously that wasn't true <laughs> and that I wanted so badly to be happy for, you know, specifically two of my cousins that got pregnant um, and went on to have healthy babies. And I had that miscarriage. Um, so where am I going with this? Yeah. So if I was sitting in your office and I was specifically bringing up feeling a lot of, of shame for these feelings of jealousy, what would you say to me? <laughs> well, um, I mean the, the jealousy. Okay. So jealousy is like a normal human emotion. Like it's part of our repertoire of emotions. So there's nothing wrong with emotions, right? We, we can judge the ourselves or other people for having them, but they're just inherently a part of the human experience. So including the ones we don't like, you know, <laughs> which is most of them, um, including <laughs> jealousy. <right? laughs> uh, so, and, and the, you know, feeling the then compounding, you know, shame that makes it worse or self-judgment is that makes it worse. Um, so, so of course it's a normal, natural reaction giving, given the situation you were in. And I don't know, I don't know the stats on, you know, how many women experience the jealous, you know, being jealous of pregnant women, but it's a thing. I mean, I wouldn't say this if I was, <laughs> if we were in a therapy room, but um, like I even experienced it, like it, I saw it start to creep up and I didn't have problems getting pregnant the first time, but I wanted a baby and we weren't quite ready yet, you know, in our life situation to have a second baby and just that wanting to have a baby and knowing that it wasn't time to like try yet was um, enough to bring it up and be jealous and resentful of of women walking down the street. <laughs> and it's crazy how strong those feelings are. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I would, you know, obviously I'd tell you that like, it's okay to have those feelings. That's a normal, natural thing. And if we read jealousy as um, a fear of losing something, um, losing something that you have, Meaning, um, I guess some people differentiate that from envy is wanting something that you don't have. But in this context, it's like losing, it's losing a, um, a dream or a conception, right? Or a hope or a wish for yourself. 
like a potential. And maybe that won't happen for me. Mm-hmm. Or this time around, it won't happen for me or won't happen in the way that I want it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's what the fear of, of losing that potential. Um, and those are sometimes the hardest things to lose, you know, our hopes and dreams. Mm-hmm. And so it's really a, a, a conflict within ourselves, right? Uh, a, a fear that um, this might not happen to, for me. And then that's, of course, put on to people, well, it's happening, that it is happening for. Mm -hmm. And what would you recommend if, you know, and I had a family member that really experienced this, um, the jealousy and, um, and then a lot of like resentment that she felt deeply impacted a lot of her relationships. Like luckily for me, it's like the family members are pregnant. They're in Texas. Like I wasn't really in a position where I had to physically be around a lot of these women when they, when they were pregnant. Of course I teach childbirth preparation for whatever reason, those women didn't trigger me. It was just personal, you know, friends and family members. Um, but with, you know, the um, family member that I'm talking about, her, you know, relationships were really damaged. And um, so, so with that said, if a woman, if, if this jealousy, if this resentment is like deeply impacting her personal relationships, it's not just something she's feeling and personally dealing with, but it's maybe causing her to say lash out at a pregnant friend or family member. Um, I have another piece to this question, but I'm going to start with that. What would you say to her again, if it's impacting her relationships, how could she navigate that? So it's not as damaging to, to her. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a couple things. So when it, if it gets, if it's at the point where it's damaging relationships, that's a time to get help with it, Mm -hmm. you know, which is usually going to be a professional, you know, um, a therapist of some sort, Mm -hmm. if it's gone, you know, gotten to that stage. Um, what, what she could do personally or what one could work on, you know, within themselves to prevent it getting to that point, Mm -hmm. um, is acknowledging that, you know, the jealousy is carrying a message and it's usually in this situation, it's pretty clear what the message is. Um, you know, the message is, you know, I want to be pregnant. I want a baby. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's always the difference between, you know, it's, it's giving, making you very clear of what you want that you don't have, which is the gift of the jealousy, right? Is making that very clear how much, you know, how much you care about this idea, this dream, or, you know, this potential reality. And so it's really validating in a certain way. Um, in, in kind of honoring that passion that one has. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, you know, part one, um, part two might be something like, um, well, you know, am I taking all the steps that I need to, Mm -hmm. to do this? And probably in this situation, again, probably, yes, you are, you know, given your, your means and your resources. Um, So, but that's also helpful in like directing that energy or can be helpful. Um, It can be super helpful to talk to people that you trust about it. So people that can contain this really big passion is what we're talking about. Like people that can hold the anger that is alongside of that passion. And so that's probably not going to be the person that it's directed at. Um, it's, you know, it's going to be someone who you is a reliable person that you can trust and talk to. Um, and it might also be your partner, but your partner might also not get it also. So, um, you know, it's, I think it's good to be upfront about it, but they might not be able to be consoling or do anything helpful. (laughs) I can relate to that. (laughs) My sweet husband, yeah, did not <laughs> did not understand. Yeah, and and so something that I thought about, you know, when you were talking about that kind of like communication piece, um, you know, and I 
definitely like I had that instinct, you know, like one of the cousins that was pregnant, I'm, you know, really close to, but I was like, she is not the person to talk to about this jealousy. Um, but okay. So say for example, I received an invitation from one of those people and they're like, come, come to my baby shower or come, you know, celebrate this thing or just come out and have like lunch with me. And I felt like I'm, I'm not ready. I don't want to do that. I feel like it's going to trigger me. You know, what would be a way to, you know, honor my feelings and communicate to her that that I'm not in a good place for that without it making her feel like it's it's personal or like she did something wrong what would be a healthy way to navigate essentially Mm. turning down invitations to connect with the women that are triggering you yeah no I think no I think that's great I mean even backing up before that like I think it's great the idea of honoring yourself like I'm not in a position to go to this celebration Mm -hmm. because I'm you know I'm not feeling it Mm -hmm. um to put it mildly, mildly. Uh, but I think, I think, you know, it, it always depends on what level of relationship do you have with this person? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's an ongoing relationship, if it's an acquaintance, you might just decline it. Right. Yeah. I'm busy that weekend. If, but if it's someone like, you know, a cousin or a closer friend, um, someone that you are going to have a continuing relationship with, they, they, you know, I think it would be, it's totally fine to, to say, I'm, you know, this is, I'm struggling with getting pregnant and I, and I'm just not in a place where I'm able to, um, you know, be there for people Mm -hmm. essentially some version of that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's fine to tell people, I think it's even really, um, you know, it can strengthen, if you're, if someone's feeling ill, if you're feeling alienated from a friend, if one is, then saying, well, I'm alienated because of this, it's really not you. It's like this thing that I'm dealing with, like that can bring the, you know, the two closer in a certain way than just ignoring them for, or avoiding them for years or for months or whatever the time frame is, because Mm -hmm. then the person's going to be like, what happened? Mm -hmm. So in a certain way, just being really like, um, you don't have to be super detailed and go into all the deepest, darkest things, just be, you know, name it and then kind of move on, Mm -hmm. um, can be really healthy for relationships. Yeah. And, and in closing, let's like, let's flip it. So what say you're the woman that is pregnant and you're so excited and you're so happy and you want everybody else to be excited with you and you have that loved one that you know is feeling that jealousy is not wanting to connect um and you're having a hard time understanding it you are taking it personally what Hmm. would you say to to that woman i mean (laughs) that's (laughs) <laughs> I would say that, that's you know um that they're going through something it's not actually about you and your baby like it's about them and their struggle yeah um so you don't have to take it on yeah. like yeah. just let them work through their their stuff mm-hmm. um and is it upsetting that they're not happy for you? Well, yeah, of course. And then you can, you know, deal with those feelings. Yeah, I'm disappointed that my friend can't be here when I really needed her, mm-hmm. for example. Um, you know, and, and examine what feelings that brings up. It's probably going to be re- somewhere around rejection, loss, abandonment feelings. Yeah. Um, and so then, you know, really looking at those and feeling those. hmm And I, you know, I'm all about like sharing and being authentic, but in this particular situation, would you agree that it is probably best, you know, to, to not bring those feelings to the friend that is in, in her own pain, you know, to say, you know, I love you, but this is making me feel, you know, really rejected or what, whatever it is. Oh, I see. Would you agree that like, if you're having those feelings come up, you know, you're the one that's pregnant, it's probably best, just like we were talking about, you know, the, if you're the one feeling jealous because you can't get pregnant, you know, you want to talk through those feelings with, a, a trusted source, somebody that's not the, the trigger for you. So same with this, you know, if you're pregnant, you're so happy, 
would you agree that it's probably not best to <laughs> share, you know, with the pre- with the woman that can't get pregnant, how she's making you feel by not being happy for her? Yeah. A really long-winded way of asking a question. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that, that um, so if it's something like rule of thumb, when we're super triggered about something, so on either side of this, you know, dynamic, mm-hmm. that's not the time to share our feelings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause that's when it's going to be destructive. Right. Like, right. so let's say the woman was like, you know, either in either side of this dynamic. So they're, they are resolved, not resolved. Like it's all gone, but resolved. Like it's neutralized. Like I get what's going on. It's still upsetting for me, but I'm not like it's, I'm not under its sway mm-hmm. in this moment. Mm-hmm. Then that, that is, I guess I encourage people if they're able to find that moment Mm-hmm. To say, wow, I understand, you know, I understand you can't be, ha- you know, be a part of this and or be happy for me. I totally understand that it's, it's a, it's kind of sad for me because I love you so much as a friend, but I understand yeah. for instance, something like that. Yeah. And that can actually deepen, you know, and make it more real between the, oh yeah, this is my friend. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it it can have a really healing effect. If, if one is not in that state of mind, yeah, I would encourage you not to, yeah, not to vent or not to share your feelings, you know, with that person. Yeah. To maybe wait till you're in like a more neutral space emotionally before having any kind of communication around that. that Yeah. And not expecting much, like on both yeah. of these going both directions, you not expect, but just, you're just kind of stating where I, I am at, mm-hmm. you know, not like where you put me, mm-hmm. but where I'm at in this situation. Yeah. Um, and then just, you know, letting it be like, maybe this other person has something to say about it. Maybe they just are going to take it in yeah. and for that to be okay. Yeah. Not having expectations is what I'm trying to say of the other person. Right. Well, thank you so much. I wish I had this conversation with you like 16 months ago. <laughs> I wish I had better things to say 16 no, months ago. <laughs> this is so helpful. And and again, it's such a huge thing that women go through that again, I think so many don't don't talk about because there is so much shame around it. So I think it's really helpful to have information on how to navigate this tricky time. And, and luckily I can say from experience is those feelings pass that jealousy passes and, you know, you can get to a a healing space with these, with these women, but it takes, takes time. And I think these tips are really going to help women not, um, experience too much damage in their relationships along the way. Whoa, whoa, whoa.